Hi, I am Minister Tony Hampton. I am the Director of Outreach Services here at Integrity Bible Church, and this is Minister's Corner. Hi, you know, when I was 12 years old, I had the responsibility of taking care of my, my siblings, my brother and, and three sisters. And on one Saturday, when my mother and father were out doing a second job, my mother was a housekeeper and my father um, often got jobs as a handyman. He was off, off, off to work on a Saturday and left me the responsibility of taking care of my siblings. And within that time frame, we had the responsibility together to make sure that our beds were straightened and our room was neat, neat and also to make sure that the house was tidy. Well, on this particular Saturday, I had a knock at the door. And being the oldest, my responsibility also was to answer the door. When I answered the door, I saw this strange man dressed in blue. He was a police officer. He shared with us that um, he asked me first if my mother was home, and I said, no, sir. Then he, he said, would you please give this to her when she returns? And I said, what's wrong? He said, we found your father face down in, the, in a pool. Well, you can imagine at 12 years old, being the oldest and my four siblings, how that affected us. We were devastated. We began to cry. But we also began to pray. You see, my family is part of a Le Levitical family. It stands back five generations in our family of pastors, ministers, deacons, evangelists, and ushers. And it's one thing we knew even at that age, even at, as children, is that we had the ability to pray. And that's what we did. We prayed and cried the entire time until my mother returned home. When she returned, I rushed to her and I said, Mama, Mama, Daddy's dead. She looked at me and said, What are you talking about? I gave her the card. She called the number. She went to the hospital. And when she returned, she says, There's nothing wrong with your father. He's well. But our neighbor died. You see, my father and neighbor shared the same first name, Tommy. And it averted, even through prayer, it averted a family crisis. And that's why today we are going to talk about the family 911. You see, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, it says to pray continually, pray without ceasing. And as you can tell, that's what we were taught. Have you ever been or know about a family who every time the church door opened, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they were there? That's the kind of family I grew up in. And so today we're going to have three points to help you first how the, how the Bible will transition you and build and strengthen and be a saving guide to your family. Second, the importance of prayer. And third, you are the light. You know, the Bible spans from Genesis to Revelations about individuals and their families, how one individual's relationship with God changed the course of their family. For instance, in Genesis 7 through 8, it talks about this man called Noah. Noah's relationship with God was so intimate that even in the crisis, God saved this family. You know, as we all know, 911 simply means a critical emergency. With that one number, you can call the fire department, the and the emergency services, medical services. You see, that one number links you to the ability to save lives. Those professionals have been trained to end their emergency to save a life. Well, we're also going to talk about a specific 911 today, which is the Bible. You see, in Noah's case, because of his intimate relationship with God, he was not only to, able to save himself, 
but he saved his family. Even though under scrutiny, the being mocked and made fun of, because after all, who ever saw rain? And why are you building this big monstrosity of a thing that we've never seen? But Noah, through listening to God, saved his family. Many years after that instance with my father, my mother of now a ripe old age was stricken with COPD. She often found herself in the hospital. And I, being a military of background, she was, I often got calls to, saying, hey, mom is in the hospital again. But this particular time, the call was different. They told me, mom's been in the hospital for about two weeks, and she may not make it. The doctors told us that after they take the respirator off, that you should come right away because she doesn't have much time. So as I prepared to make preparations to come home, my, <clears throat> I got a phone call a day after. And they said, mom is doing well. I said, wait a minute. You just told me the doctors said that she was going to die. Mom is sitting up in the bed and saying she wants something to eat. Now, if you knew my mother, when she said she wants something to eat, there is nothing wrong with her. And praise to be to God, that was the one instance. But there were several instances afterwards. In fact, each and every time my family prayed, not once, not twice, but three times. And during those three times, she was taken off a respirator, her heart stopped, and each and every time, God was faithful, and his grace and mercy extended toward our family, and she came back to us. So much so that on the third time, my mother's response was, you know what? I just want you guys to know. And she told us this fantastic story about walking in the garden with God, singing, holding his hand. And she said, why would I want to come back here? So if you don't mind, I'll be OK. And that was a relief when God finally accepted her into his arms. You know, there's another story about Abraham's and his cousin Lot in Genesis chapters 18 and 19. Abraham's relationship was so close to God that God even thought to himself, you know, if I tell Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah, maybe he's going to want to stop me. And sure enough, when he had that conversation with Abraham, Abraham said, God, if there be 50 righteous, would you save them? God said, yes. He said, how about 40, Lord? God said, yes. How about 30, Lord? God said, yes. Even down to 10? Even though I may be a little persistent, Lord, forgive me, but how about 10? God said, I would save the 10. In the 19th chapter, it comes to Lot. Lot now has to make a life-changing decision to leave Sodom. He leaves. He makes the decision. He leaves Sodom. They're safe, one would think. But on the way out, there was one that turned back. You see, oftentimes during a crisis, we forget how to look forward to God's promise. And we turn around only to, to the demise of our life. How many times that has that happened to you? You see, Lot's wife passed away. But his family, his daughter, and their husbands were saved. You know, that's why I want to talk to you today. You see, you can be the light. You can be the reason for saving your family's light. You know, in Matthews 5 and 14, it says that be the light unto a town, which would be your community. It also says be the light that stands upon the table to be a light unto your household. And that, my friend, is your family. You see, in a 911 call here on Earth, 
We have to contact the individuals. In the emergency room, we are trained to respond to any emergency that may save a life. But my friend, today, you can make one call that can take care of everything as well. And the way you make that call is through prayer. Can I pray with you right now? Heavenly Father, I just want you to know that we, Lord God, those who are watching me right now, understand that through their relationship with you, Lord, you can change the, the course of their life. You can change the course of their family's life. It does not matter how young or old that we are, Lord God. You promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. And Lord God, we pray right now for all of those who are out there. Even though they may not even understand what I've just shared with them, Lord, let them understand this one thing, that you will never leave them or forsake them. All they have to do is call upon your name and ask you your forgiveness of their sins. And while they are being saved, you will answer all of their needs, Lord God. And so I pray this prayer, Lord God, that they will respond to you, Lord God, and believe, Lord God, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, Lord God. And whatever they will ask in his name, Lord God, shall be answered. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done this day. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Lord, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to talk to the tens of thousands of individuals. Lord God, and if you would answer the call of this, that whoever's listening to this broadcast today, Lord God, will respond and be the light, Lord God, to others. Father God, would you save 10,000? Lord God, would you save 1,000? Father God, will you save the one? We thank you this day for all that you've done and we believe, Lord God, that we will be the light of the world. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. You know, if this message has been a blessing to you, I want you to call our church office at 205-833-4415. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you.